blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Anybody can rise up anytime, raised by God, blessed by God, prosper, buy a car, build a house. But for that thing to at last you, it has to be by integrity and the presence of the Holy Spirit. God told me, all these get blessed quick and end quick should not be in the midst of the saints anymore. Intelligent can take you up. Only integrity can keep you there. And look at all my children who are in the ministry. My associate preacher, look at Isaiah William, look at his darling wife, look at David Brown, look at Coletta. And the first thing I tell them, don't succeed outside and fail at home. Don't. It's better you fail outside and succeed at home than to fail at home and succeed outside. Does somebody hear what I'm saying this morning? When I was here in March, I told you that God told me the reason for the reason for recession is absent from source. That's why America is in recession. She's turned her back to her source. She's using computer to pray. Many Christians are now using computer Bible. Instead of such the scripture, they are pressing button. The Bible says, search the scripture, but you are pressing button. For even the Bible, I have received five computer Bibles. I don't know where they are. Because the Bible didn't say press button, it says search the scripture. I want to spend time to look for where Ruth is in the Bible and find it difficult to find than to press button and what somebody else say. Come out. Things are getting better. I say things are getting better. I say things are getting better. Say with me, things are getting better. For the Lord is on his throne. Things are getting better. Say it loud. Say it loud. For the Lord is on his throne. Things are getting better. For the Lord is on his throne. Things are getting better. In Jesus name. Do you believe it? Good. Give the Lord a hand. Hear me. When God told me to build Miracle Center. I had $120. And he finished it. Now is the time. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness there. Yeah. I had $514 when we started Faith Arena. It ended with millions paid for. Go start it. Say that everybody. That's all. The reason many of your dream have never come to pass is that you have not started it. You, are, you want to do it by power, by might, and God says it shall be done by my spirit. You can look around now and no debt owed because it was started i said lord how do we start university he said i told you i will build my church 
If I build miracle center, I build a Bible school, training people from all nations of the earth, and build a hospital that took over from faith, faith, city of faith, and it's alive and bustling. He said, you just tell me I'm willing to do what you say. And now I'm glad to tell you I have $1,000 ready to start a university. Did you hear me? I have got $1,000 ready to start a university. If 120 can do Miracle Center, 514 can do Faith Arena, 1,000 can start a university. Give me a shout of yes! When I was here in March, I told you that God told me the reason for the reason for recession is absent from source. That's why America is in recession. She's turned her back to her source. She's using computer to pray. Many Christians are now using computer Bible. Instead of such the scripture, they are pressing button. The Bible says, search the scripture. But you are pressing button. For even the Bible, I have received five computer Bibles. I don't know where they are. Because the Bible didn't say press button. It says search the scripture. I want to spend time to look for where Ruth is in the Bible and find it difficult to find that to press button and what somebody else say. Come out. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Turn to it. Page. Message number two. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. D E U. Start from there. Deuteronomy 28. Those of you with computer Bible, press it. It's not everything that is from God. Very soon you are going to have prayer Bible. You press button to pray. The Bible says, pour out your heart before God. Read me verse 1 and then jump to verse 7. Read it loud, verse 1. Hear me, stop there. It shall what? Now the first scripture we read, Luke chapter 5. It came to pass. Now it shall come to pass. Are you expecting anything in your life? Yes. I said, do you expect anything from God? Yes. It shall come to pass. Yes. The absence from your source is the reason for recession. When you begin to live by your salary, you'll never be satisfied for life. Bible say he suffered no man to do them wrong. He fed them 40 years in the wilderness with manna from heaven. You need some manna. Your salary is good, but the provision of God is better. Amen. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Tithe and offering is good, but miracle is better. Verse 1, read it. Excuse me, excuse me. When? 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 It shall come to pass from this day. Did you hear me? 
Go ahead. The next verse. The Lord shall say it loud. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come. Say blessings are coming. Upon me, upon me, upon me, and overtake me. Verse 7. Right. Let me tell you why God made this statement. You can't prosper without having enemies. You can't do well without having enemies. So, what God is going to do before what I want to tell you now is to take care of your enemies first. Gilbert, are you there? Before God Open you the door that no man can close. He will bind the enemy for you first. I asked God one day, Dr. Isaiah, why did you say, if I open the door, no man can shut it? He said, because I will remove the hinges. So when any man try to close it, the hinges are gone. Say yes! There's a door there. Take the hinges away and try to close it. You will walk till you die. The door cannot be closed. That's what God is going to do to your enemies from today. Say yes! Somebody asked me, say, Papa Idaosa, why is it that you always have trouble? Why do you always have problem? Life is problem oriented. But God is problem solving. And the reason many of you have no problem with the devil is because you are walking the same direction. You can't collide with the man you are going the same direction. Stand up, son. Come here. Prophet Isaiah, tell us, go. Say to us, go. You all right? I'm fine. You fine? I'm blessed. Good. Stand there. Let's hear. Tell us, go. Go. Why did we collide? We are coming from opposite direction. Those who never collide with the devil are walking the same direction with him. Yes. The reason many of you have no trouble is because you are dead. There's no problem in cemetery. <laughs> Have you ever seen two cops fighting in the funeral home? No. No. Two dead men fighting at the funeral home. No. Then you say, excuse me, what happened to both of you? <laughs> when they talk, they go home. Dead men don't fight. And the reason the devil don't fight some of you is that you are dead. He will gain nothing to look for your trouble. 
But I'm glad to tell you, God is going to give you double for your troubles. Say yes! He's going to take care of my enemy before he will do for me what I want to tell you now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. How many really, really, really indeed are set for the astonishing miracle in their lives? Yeah. Can you say yes to that? Yeah. Take my message today more as prophetic words than throwing words to you. And if you want to know what a man says, whether it's right or wrong, go see what he has done. Judge me by what God have used me to do. I have preached to more white than any black man born. And I've preached to more black than any white man born. And I've done more than any white man combined can do with nothing. So I know what I'm telling you this morning. Verse 8, read it now. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee. What does it mean? All you have before will work for. But this one shall be different. All you ever had before came as a request. Father bless me and he bless you. The next stage is commanded blessing. That's where I am now in life. I used to fast 40 days, 40 nights. Somebody asked me the other day in England, do you fast and pray? I said, no, I pray fast. <laughs> when God tells me, go for seven days, no water, no food, I do it fast. When he says 40 days, 
I do it fast. When you say, one day, I do it fast. When you say, not at all, eat all you can eat, I do it fast. <laughs> I fast pray now. When you are young, your brain can be twisted. But when you begin to hear from God, and I'm glad to tell you, it is the Lord speaking to you right now. He shall command the blessings upon thee and upon thy store what houses some of you have never had faith to ask God for houses Church of God Mission Collector has 104 church building going on right now 104 and 36 in Benin building project and God is saying I shall command my blessings upon thy store houses. Are you ready for it? Yes. It's time to stop struggling and start expecting. Yes. Can you say amen? Yes. The Lord shall command. Why did the Bible use the word command? When God sends it by command, the enemy is already out of the way. So it will get to you whether you are ready or not. You hear that? The next blessing is coming to you whether you prayed or fasted or not. What is commanded? <laughs> and guess what? Any blessing commanded by God never miss your home address. It doesn't stop at the Baptist church before coming to living word. It comes straight. Why? It's commanded. Why? Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. Why? Because God knows your home address. Two years ago, I called this woman of fire and lightning. I said, I heard your message. You preach here. He preached it here. And when he finished, we drove in the same car together. He preached here. Here. I sat here. She sat here. When she was introduced to preach, she jumped up and prayed and did all she knows to do best. I said, get out of debt! Get out of debt! Get out of debt! Huh. I said, I'm glad you preached it. And you are going to do it yourself. She said, I'm trying. I said, no, you don't try. You get out. That's what you preach. Get out of debt. You get out first. The only way your message will work is when you get out of debt. And we went home. We prayed. We wept before God. And I said, go home. Tell your husband. The next six months, every debt you owe will be paid. The church the house, the car, the three major things in your life. I say, you can't preach it to people and you live in the absence of it. I say, I live in Africa. I owe no man nothing. No dime. I say, no dime. I say, you are too precious to owe anybody anything. Die, die. I owe no one when you die. Because a good man liveth an inheritance, not death. She went home. She said, what do I do? I told her, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I'm coming to join you to do this. And in six months or less, today she has Mercedes Benson's. Um, what's the name? Huh? I thought it was in my name, Mercedes Benson. <laughs> it's Benz, okay. Free of charge. Home, free of charge. Church, free of charge. Now she can pray for you, and your prayer will be answered because she's out of death. When a man owes him, pray for you to get out of death. That prayer can hardly be answered. 
because he is owing. When a sick man pray for your healing, you can hardly be healed because he is sick. But when a woman out of death pray for you to be out of death, what God has done for her, he will do it for you. Can you say amen? And any of you children, just in case Jesus comes tomorrow, I'm not going to die. I'm not dying. I promise him I wait for him here. I want to obey him to occupy till he comes. Amen. Hallelujah. But just in case, for any reason, the trumpet sound and you are still here. And somebody came and said, your papa is owing me one dime. Tell him he's a liar. I don't owe. And I don't marry people's wife. I owe no man anything. No man is big enough for me to owe debt. God is too big to fail to supply all my needs. Yes. And the reason some of you have nothing is because you have no needs. So God has nothing to supply. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. When you wake up tomorrow, pack all your bills and say, God, you promised to pay all my bills. Don't show him half. And the problem I have in this country is that when you have big problem. You take it to the bank. When you have small one, you bring it to the church. As if the bank is bigger than God. Come on. And God is bigger than City Co. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The Lord shall command Amen. his blessings upon thee. The Lord shall command. Command. Finish the last words there. In thy storehouses. In all that thou settest thy hand. To what? Unto. 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 Set your hand out. Say God. You are. Commanding. Your mighty miracles. Upon this side. This side. This side. This side. This side. Command it upon me. In Jesus' name. Say loud amen. amen. Be tired of trickling. Believe him for the commanded miracle. That's what he did for you in Miami. From zero to surplus. When you were trying to be a pastor, you couldn't. When God made you a pastor, they came from the east, west, north, south. He commanded it. If I ask you who brought you here this morning, you may not even be able to tell. God commanded you to be here. Amen. For me to leave mom at home with thousands to come here, I'm commanded by the commander in chief. That's why I'm here. When I told Dr. Coletta I was going, I'm leaving her behind. She said, Papa, are you going? I said, uh -huh. I'm under authority. God commanded me to be here. Verse 9, everybody. The Lord shall establish. Stop there. Many of you have, have succeeded in the past and you are not established. But from now, stand to your feet. From now, say from now. From now. The, Lord the Lord shall, shall establish, me. establish me. Say it. The Lord shall establish me. Lord shall establish me. Yes. The Lord shall establish me. He said and holy people, which is good. What does that mean? When he establishes you and makes you holy, he protects what you have. God told me, and I told you, he told me, many Christians are praying for success, and they are not praying for establishment. So when they die, nobody remember they lived. Walk around with me. Walk around with me. Say, Heavenly Father, it's time for you 
to establish me. Heavenly Father, I've succeeded. I want to succeed. That's not enough. Establish me. Establish me. Establish me. Establish me. Use me for posterity. For children not born yet to remember that I ever lived because of you who have established me. Who has established me. You are establishing me. From now, I shall be established for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 10. Where you are, don't move. Read it, verse 10. And all the people say that loud. Go ahead. And all the people of the earth eh, shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous. In what? I want to please take this out of your head. Open your eyes and look at me eyeball to eyeball. If you are afraid to prosper, you can't help people. Yes, yes. Say yes, Lord. Yes. Now he says to you today, and I want you to hear it. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. That means the dress you wore to Nigeria is not the one you are wearing back. That means the car you used yesterday can be changed today. And let me tell you the secret. The Lord shall make it. If it's you to do it, that's very hard. We are suffering for Jesus in Africa. When I asked the driver now, go bring the car out. He said, which of them? The Lord shall make thee plenteous. Prophesy with your mouth. Kola baha kosoto. Elebomo secondly. Plenteous in good. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, 
click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. In the fruit of your body, the seed of your ground, the Lord shall make thee pentious in goose to the glory of his name. And you say, Amen. Amen. Hear me. This church, a few years from now, shall be the headquarter. Living faith in Chicago. Living Word in Houston, Living Word in Dallas, Living Word in Atlanta. Jesus, people, church in Dallas, in Texas, where others die, God give us life. Somebody say, Yes! We don't die with the dying, we live with the living. shall make thee I have tried for 20 years to be poor God refused 20 years I've told you the story I fasted and said God because of the political situation because of the general situation until 5 years ago the president of Nigeria looked at me like this. He said, Your grace. I said, Yes. He said, You make God sweet to serve. You make God sweet to serve because of the way He has blessed you. He said, This is my phone number. The vice president gave me his bedroom phone number. When I was poor, nobody gave me their home number. Did you hear what I'm saying? David said, I have said in my prosperity, I shall not be moved. The Lord shall make thee plenteous. Take it as prophetic. Take it. Whatsoever Whatever direction you set your hand shall be blessed. Be creative. Re, re establish your life. Consolidate and, and, and extend yourself. Don't hook down. Stretch out. Rediversify yourself. We started with one church, now nearly 7,000 churches. I can pastor two churches, but God gave me men and women to pastor thousands of churches. The Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Why? Because He commanded you feed the hungry the naked with all the cars we had at home this week we were short of cars too many but not enough when there are too many people to use it it shall make you plenty of singles white missionaries used to come to Africa say they are going to suffer for Jesus now it's a lie we have proved mango tree can be God's tree Snakes in Africa have all gone to Miami Zoo. <laughs> Verse 12. 
The Lord shall open. The Lord. Everybody read it loud. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures. Heavens to give thee what? Pray. And what? To thy land and his season. And to bless all of the works of thy hand. Give me a yes, Jesus. Listen to me. When God says, I shall open unto thee my good treasures, it means there was something closed. That means that where you have been getting your blessing was not from God. It was to the sweat of your brow. So you boast. This is the car I sweat to buy. This is the house I sweat to buy. Sweat is a cost, not a blessing. I used to boast of how much I sweat until I read that when God cost man, he sweat for the first time. Otherwise, Adam was nowhere when God gave him the whole world. That is the latest thing. The Lord shall command upon thee the blessings. In your going out, in your coming in, in your lying down, in your rising up. When they ask you what did you gain from the camp meeting, tell them what everybody say. But say this, the Lord told me. Say it. The Lord told me. He shall command his blessings upon me. Don't remember what I said because I told you nothing. God told you. And if God says it, it shall be done. Did you hear me? Your miracle will astonish you very soon. When I was in charge of paying the salary of our staff, every month end, I almost have high blood pressure because the people were too many. When God took over, not, not just snakes that left Africa to Miami Zoo, check began to come from there from Detroit, from Baltimore, from all over the world, to say, Papa, the vision is from God. We will carry the load together. Yes, now, whew, poor people don't do this. I'm no more poor. I'm rich. Amen. Prosperity to me is no more a slogan. It's a reality. Do you hear me? Yes. Ask car. Time will come. You open your food savings. You don't know where to turn. You force chicken to the fridge and turkey comes. You force it to one corner, beef come. Tea bone steak come. You force Fanta inside, Coca-Cola comes. The Lord shall command his blessings. Guess what? And he added no sorrow to it. Raise your two hands. Lift up your hands. Whether it's one or two. Say with me. Dear Father. I've heard your words. Every sin in my life. I put it in the blood of Jesus. Every iniquity. I put it in the blood of Jesus. I've heard you say. You will command. Your blessings. Upon me. Let no man. Or forces. Of darkness. Hinder. What you, God, have sent my way. From this day, I accept the responsibility to prosper and 
be established in your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Whatever you give me, I will use it to serve you, to bless my generation for your good. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. Now open your eyes and look at me. I have covenant from God. Genesis 12, 3. What I bless on earth is blessed in heaven. And God promised to bless them that bless me. I want you to go back to your seat. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God 
all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idaosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, they said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, uh, moving on from one project to another and often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, Yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Odicha and we went to put posters all over Odicha and the first day of the crusade a truck load of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching they all put their guns down and he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener 
for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Niederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the hood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Dausa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft, lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me. And you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold plated aircraft. He called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy, 
He calls me Ghana boy. I came said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said there, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take off the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. 
And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young. But he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past and people were crying in my house. What's up? <laughs> And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead. I said what? I'm not going to lie to Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl name? I will send it to the I said it's in Warata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson, the outside. He said, what is happening? 
they told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. So he said, they should take him to the room. Then take him to where yeah, they, they lie me down. So ca carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah! That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, 
uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came. I said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room. I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside. And I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. He said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, we prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer. And that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys, and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about ten grandchildren, to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give. That is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button 
on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bather Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young Benson, young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. 
He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution. 
just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sits over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attracts upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City.
Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including my God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video, to bless all the people, and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.